to this episode of Hammering Down. I'm your host, Kaylor Hodges. I'm hoping you're having a great, great day. I We are coming off of a massive, massive win for the Three Sparks. Legion took on Atlanta United 2 and beat them 6-0. 6-0. Yeah, this is, that ties to the biggest win in team history when we 6 0 uh, KC, Sporting KC 2. And just the last home match, we beat, oh, who was it? That was Loudoun United 6 1. That home match feels like it was forever ago now. I know it wasn't, but it feels like it. But we really played, went out and played a really dominating style of footy, one that I was very impressed by. But before we get too far into it, I do want to go ahead and have my shameless plug. Um, I do want to go ahead and shout out my patrons, uh, people who have just joined the Patreon list, which if you didn't know, I just started a Patreon. Um, it's, it's really cool. Um, basically, it's your way, if you want to support me and get a little bit extra content, you can. I have... I've said it before, all the podcasts, all the articles, they will all come out as free. All that the Patreon will do is give some extra content if you want to support me. But those patrons are Clay, Sandy, Harry, and Zach. So to you guys, thank you so much for supporting me and allowing me to do what I always dreamt of. As we're Anyway, let's go ahead and go forward. Legion came out with a new system, which I do believe in the last episode I talked about, but I did, I have mentioned on Twitter before, is that we came out in the 4-1-3-2. And this doesn't sound like a major difference from what we usually see with the 4-2-3-1. Uh, all that changes is that we swap out a defensive midfielder for an attacking presence for another forward. And to me, this feels like a no-brainer. Our defense is elite. I don't think there's any question around that. We have a very, very good, very, very good um, defense. Uh, Alex Cronale, Johnny Dean, Fanwell Cavita, uh, Ryan James or Mikey Lopez or Jake Roof when he gets healthy. And, you know, your pick of, you know, Mikey Lopez if you have him in as your center defensive mid, your Zach Caravo, if you have him there, or an Anderson Nasidu. You have three really elite holding midfielders you can put back there, so much so that I felt like before we were wasting a spot by putting another holding midfielder there. Maybe you could say you have one of those holding midfielders join the midfield attack, and it really becomes a 4-1-4-1, but even then, our issue was never in the midfield it was always in that final third right and so we finally made the change we finally made the change to a 4-1-3-2 where we had Zach Haravo as our defensive midfielder not Anderson Asiadu we could have a conversation about that but I, I feel like Anderson and Zach with the form that they're both in, you ride both of the hot hands, and that's what we've done. I wouldn't be surprised if against San Diego Loyal, we see Anderson and Siadu, uh start back there, and then Zach Caravo comes in off the bench. That's not a shocking option. Um, this also allowed, which we'll talk about later, uh, Fanwell Cavita was allowed to come off of the pitch and we had Zach Caravo slot in a center back. That's something he's done a lot. Playing Zach there is it just gives us a little bit more flexibility. Again, I wouldn't be shocked if we see Anderson back there starting as well, and that become the rotation. But anyway, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Let's kind of back up a little bit. We traded out that for allowing Bruno to start, and Bruno Lapa is a guy that I've been fighting for for a long time to be starting. I've said it for a long time. This is a guy that needs to be starting every single match. I don't know if you guys can hear the dog that's barking in the background, though. That dog has a lot to say. Um, there were also birds earlier that was chirping outside the window. Um, if you're watching the video version of this, because, yes, there is a video version of the podcast now. At least I hope there is. We'll see how editing goes. Um, you can see that I'm in my truck and I'm right beside a freaking forest. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. That... <laughs> um, Bruno Lopp is a guy that's needed to start for a long time now. 
he is the Brazilian magician. And even though he's not racking in the assists and goals, that does not mean he is not valuable. We saw him really pulling strings this last week uh, just against Elena and also against Loudon. Obviously, Loudon, he had his hat trick. But his ability to pull strings like he did against Elena United was incredible. We saw it especially in the fourth goal by Legion where... Enzo plays it off to Bruno off of a little set piece, a little free kick. Um, Bruno has the option. He picks out his option where it's like, am I going to go right, left, or straight to a striker? He chooses to go out right to Marlon, who Marlon had an incredible match. Absolutely stunning match by Marlon. Um which I've actually heard some conversations. Somebody tell me, is it Marlon or Marlon? Because I've heard people from Brazil pronounce it as both, and I'm confused. But anyway, um, Bruno takes it, and he plays it out wide to Marlon. Marlon, who Marlon, Marlon, <laughs> whatever. Marlon plays it out to Johnny Dean, who Johnny Dean passes the ball in the air to Juan Agudelo. And he heads it in. Now, this is something also I've been calling for for a long time. There's two things that you cannot coach. You can coach intelligence in a way. You can teach game knowledge. You can teach dribbles. You can teach all that kind of stuff. But there's two things you can't teach. You can't teach speed and you can't teach height. And we saw both things come into play. Height. That's a height. Height. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> um... Those are the two things you can't teach. And we saw both on this one play. We see Marlon pass the ball off to Johnny Dean, who just outpaces his defender. And he says, you know what? We're going to pass the ball in the air. And it goes straight to one Aguadella's head, which almost nobody is going to be able to beat him in the air. And he slots it into the bottom right corner, bottom left, if you're the goalie, obviously. And it was perfection. It was absolute perfection. And this was obviously the fourth goal. And you can look at it and say, well, this is the United's defense, whatever. But we saw this against New Mexico as well, where we saw Johnny Dean get the ball and just pass the ball in the air to Juan Aguidolo. He gets his head on it and scores. And I do feel like I need to make this, uh, this uh, conversation now. Juan Aguidolo had an amazing match last night. And why was that? I know some people were kind of wondering, is it just because Atlanta United 2's defense is bad? Partially. But the bigger deal to me is that he was not the solo striking force. He didn't have to dribble to beat a man. All he had to do was find a pocket of space, pass the ball off to somebody, or purely just exist in that space and pull a defender. Before, when we saw him all by himself... We were playing so disconnected from our striker Juan Aguidelo or even Eddie Horvat when he was up there. They would be so disconnected from everybody else that they needed to dribble to beat somebody. And Juan has the ability to dribble, but the issue was is that whenever he would beat one man, there'd be another man right there, and it didn't matter. It was all for naught. So the biggest thing for me is seeing that we have Enzo right there who can lay the ball off to him. We have Marlon that are right there that can lay the ball off to him. We have Prosper that's right there that can lay the ball off to him. And uh, vice versa. Juan gets the ball. He can instantly pass Enzo, instantly pass to Marlon, instantly pass to Prosper, whatever. Why? Because Bruno Lapa was back there and was able to control the pace of the match. We didn't need Enzo to become playmaker. When your team's leading goal scorer is having to play, pay, uh, having to play, playmaker. I don't know why that one just threw me for a loop. But whenever your team's leading scorer is having to do that, you're taking them out of the play to score. And now we're using one as a striker and a distributor. He doesn't need to be a dribbler. He just doesn't have to allow other guys like Marlon to do that because the moment Marlon beats a man, he can pass it off to somebody. When Juan Agudelo is our most forward player and he's trying to lay the ball off to somebody, he's always having to pass the ball backwards. 
as opposed to forward, which we saw on the last goal that Enzo had that Juan just pulls three people and he passes it to a wide open Enzo Martinez. Before, in another system, that doesn't happen. Enzo's not right there because he's having to play farther back to distribute the ball to Juan. Juan's having to dribble around three people. That's the danger of this system. We're not going to have to see as much dribble ball because we can just play fast and distribute. If you look at the average positioning that Legion had in this match, it was basically, you kind of look at it as a 3-3-4, where Zach Haravo, uh Fanwell Cavita, and Alice Cronale are all playing a three-man back line, while Johnny Dean, uh, Mikey Lopez, and Pro- uh, Bruno Lapa, wow, I am all sorts of out of it, y'all. It is hot in this truck. I'm, let me just tell you. <laughs> Um, those while you have Bruno, Johnny, and Mikey all kind of waiting for the scraps of the pressure that's coming from this front four. The front four being Prosper, Marlon, uh, Enzo, and Juan. Juan is kind of sitting back a little bit, allowing Enzo, Prosper, and Marlon to do a majority of the pressing. And because of that, Juan can also clean up any scraps immediately. And if anything gets past him, that's when Mikey, Johnny, or Bruno were able to pick up the ball and continue the attack. This is the kind of press that Legion need to do. Like I said, there are some things you can't teach, and that's size and pace. And when you have a team that's as fast as Marlon, as fast as, you know, obviously Johnny Dean, Prosper Kasim, who got his 100th appearance for the club, by the way, and his goal, obviously, the pin, he had to take it twice, I guess. Somebody came off their line too early, um, had to retake it, made both of them. And the assist he had to Marlon, perfectly weighted. We haven't seen really that kind of assist from Prosper for, before. And it was perfect. He just completely cut open the defense. Marlon just, the bottom right corner, as clean as you like. What do you do about it? It was incredible. Um, congratulations, Prosper, on 100 appearances with the club. Um, he's been here for a long time. And post-match, we saw him just talking to every kid who came up to him. It was incredible. I, I loved every moment. I love Prosper Kasim with my entire heart. <laughs> um, but those guys are able to press the ball now. And they have someone behind them that if they get beat, they immediately have someone there to you know, be there to back them up. And if it gets past even them, you have Alex Cronale, you have Fanwell Cavita to clean up the secondary scraps if anybody gets past them. This is the system going forward. This press can be deadly. And we've seen the press work for other teams before. That's how the Baby Bulls won it back in 2017, arguably the best I would say, yeah, the best team in USL history, the 2017 Baby Bulls. They made a living off of this kind of press. And like I said before, you don't need to be a counterattacking team to press. You just need to be able to strike fast after you get the ball back. Like I said before, like we did against Loudon, we dominated possession, but we didn't exactly mean to. You know what I mean? If we just kept winning the ball back and winning the ball back and winning the ball back. It was incredible. If you look at Atlanta United, this Atlanta United 2 match, Atlanta United 2 outpossessed Legion 53% to you know 47. Legion only had 47% of the ball. But the thing is, is Atlanta United 2 did nothing with it. I said this before in the pre-match show, that Atlanta United 2 were going to hold on to the ball. They were going to try to hold it in the back line. They're going to try to pick and pick and jab. And they, they aren't a one-punch kind of boxer. They're not our, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Francis Ngannou in the UFC. He's not, we're not looking for one punch to end it all. You know, we're not the bronze bomber out of Tuscaloosa. We're not looking for one punched end at all. We're just poking and prodding. We are just looking. They are looking for that. I say we as if I'm Atlanta United 2. Atlanta United 2 is just jab, 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 jab. But when they can't even get past the midfield mark because our press is so effective, they may be possessing the ball, but they're doing nothing with it. 
And this is the kind of system that we need to be doing rolling forward. Um, who cares about possession? It's a stupid stat. It really just tells you how a team is trying to play rather than how they are playing exactly, unless you have something that goes against the norm. For example, San Antonio FC loves to give up possession. They are almost in the bottom half, if not the with if not the least amount of possession team in the USL every year, and yet here they are at 50 points. They are an incredible, incredible team, but that's because they want to counterattack. That's just what they do. This team has found the sauce. They have found the system. They have found the tactic that works. And going against a loyal team next week, this is the kind of stuff that we need to see. This is a loyal team that just beat San Antonio, I believe, 3-0. This is a team that can beat anybody on any given day. We need to go out with the same system. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but we need to give it a shot. But this match overall was just a really great one. This was a fun one to watch. We saw Bruno, like I said, controlling the midfield. We saw Prosper play passes. I've never seen him play before. We saw Marlon just absolutely eat other teams alive. Oh, and Enzo Martinez. Holy cow, dude. Have a match, man. Two assists. Could have had a hat trick, but he in, instead decides to lay it off to Sadiq, who Sadiq looks like the real deal, dude. Sadiq looks like that guy. Um, obviously, this is against a pretty rough Atlanta United 2 team, but his intelligence was insane. He was in right places. His dribbles look good. He's a physical guy. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do, especially if he's coming in off the bench. He's a super sub that this team needs. We have a lot of super subs now. Mateo looked great. Um, you know, we had guys like Anderson Asiadu come in off the bench. Ryan James coming off of the bench. We had uh, Matthew Corcoran come in off the bench. This is a really good team, y'all. This is a really good team. And if we can stick with this system, I promise that this is going to be a team that will be in contention for a title. I promise that. But that said, we do have important matches coming up, and I've said this before. But now with this win in Detroit City dropping points against Tampa Bay, our next few matches become even more important. If we lose to Loyal and Detroit City beats Oakland, that gap goes from six points to three, meaning we need to we need to beat Detroit City at home to retain that six point gap and fully cement ourselves into fifth. After that, we have obviously Detroit City and then we have nine oh one FC away from home. These are massive, massive matches. And like I said, we need to stay with this counterattacking system. And, you know, just press the crap out of the ball. Play fast. How many times am I going to say this today? If if you're uh, someone who's of age, go ahead and make a drinking game. Or, you know, if you have a glass of water, go ahead and uh, get a little drink of water. I bet that sounded awful on mic, but I'm leaving it in. Don't care. <laughs> um... You know, how many times have I said speed and height are the two things you can't coach? And Legion have both of them. I think that this system, with the ability to put pressure on other teams and just be able to do it, I think this is how this team can win a championship and secure a home playoff game. We can do it. I know we can do it. We have the talent to do so. It, all we have to do is just go out and execute. This is the team rolling forward. Uh, you can make small adjustments. Maybe you can put Jake Roof back in when he's healthy. Maybe you go Anderson Asiadu at a, at a central defensive mid. But at this point going forward, Bruno Lapa needs to be in the starting lineup every single week. We need to have Enzo up top with Juan Agudelo. From there, I don't care. If you want to give Prosper a rest, go ahead and put Mateo in. Go ahead and put it in Sadiq. If you want to give Marlon a rest, yeah, go ahead and put in Mateo. Put in Sadiq. We have that kind of squad. 
we have that ability to rotate the midfield, which last year, if you remember, we didn't really. We had a real midfield crisis last year that we doesn't look like we're going to have this year. We have the ability to rotate, and that's in, that's incredible. That's something that every team needs to have. Obviously, I want a little bit more backline help, but with guys like Zach Caravel, we have that. We saw Fanwell Kavita get pulled at the end of this match for Zach Caravel just to go back there and play center back. We have guys like Mikey Lopez, who I don't necessarily want him to be there, but he can play a center back position. He can do that and be pretty good at it. This is a team that can go out and win it. And am I being super excited now because we just won 6 0? Yeah, of course. But it's also because I finally saw the system that will do it. This is finally the system that will go out and do the dang thing. And I think think I said it before, but maybe I didn't. This is a team, we just beat a team 6-0 when Atlanta United only had four shots that were not blocked, and none of them were on goal. This is a great defense. This is an incredible defense. Incredible. Legion took uh, 29 shots. 15 of them were on target, by the way. That's well over half are on target. We were forcing their keeper to make saves. We missed chances. You can still say, you know what, this team still needs to be more clinical. And I would agree with you. I would agree that this team needs to be more clinical. But even then, even then, this team created more chances. They were more deadly than we've ever seen them before. This needs to stay. This needs to be what happens going forward because this team has elite talent. It's time to put it to use because I've said it at the end of every single podcast, every single article, and I'm going to say it until the last day of the season. It's a home playoff game or this season, in my eyes, is a failure. Obviously, if we go on to win the U.S. Cup or the USL Cup, fair. That's no longer a failure, but it's so hard to win away from home that in order for us to have a real deal shot at winning it all, we need a home playoff game. It is a home playoff game or failure because this team can do that. This team can get a home playoff game and earn it. Let's pack out Protective Stadium for this loyal match. Let's pack out the Wednesday night match against... Oh, no... Uh, if you guys can hear, my camera just died. Um, well, <laughs> if you're watching this, it's a black screen right now. So, that sucks. I hate that for me. This is why I probably should get like a mini fan. Man, this GoPro is hot. Um, I should probably just go inside now. Let's go ahead and call it. But yeah, go ahead and get all the Detroit City. Go in there for Detroit City. Go ahead and let's... Let's go out and go to Memphis. Let's let's have a party in Memphis. Let's get all three points. Thank you all so much for listening. Go check out the Patreon. It's going to be the first link in the description. The second one under that is going to be the article. Um, thank you all so much for the love and support. Um, until next time, guys. Keep hammering on.